Cristiano Ronaldo has struck again. The Al Nasir star was involved in the thick of the action for Portugal on Sunday. The Portuguese outfit were far too strong for their lowly European counterparts, Luxembourg, putting on a polished performance to swat them aside 6-0. And skipper CR7 netted a quick-fire double in the first half, a display which saw him perform his two signature celebrations. He even had the opportunity to merge them together, placing his hands on his chest as he screamed, Sue! Luxembourg have felt the full force of Ronaldo over the years. In 11 games against their European counterparts, CR7 7 has netted 10 times, and already in just two games of the Euro 2024 qualifiers, the former Real Madrid man has scored four goals. But before we get carried away, let's just remind ourselves they were against Minos, Liechtenstein and Luxembourg. There was one moment of controversy, however. Clearly intent on claiming his hat-trick, the former United forward tried to win a penalty. Going down in the box but initiating contact with the defender himself, CR7 looked around to the official desperately. But his protest didn't do him any favours, with the ref brandishing him a yellow card immediately. The forward pretended to look bemused, sticking his two thumbs up sarcastically. Perhaps in an attempt to spare him from getting a second yellow card, Roberto Martinez subbed CR7 off for the young forward Gonzalo Ramos, the man who famously deputised for Ronaldo at the World Cup recently, and to great success. In any case, Ronaldo made history once again against Luxembourg. Having scored his 123rd and 124th goal for his country, he also became the first European player to score four goals at the age of 38. But he could build on that tally as Portugal faced Bosnia and Iceland in June. Now, one of the shocks of the weekend came as Morocco beat Brazil 2-1. Goals from Buffal and Sabiri secured a famous win for the African side, while Casemiro struck for the Auri Verde. Real Madrid forward Rodrigo was quick to criticise the performance of the referee after the final whistle. He accused him of flagging in favour of the home side on too many occasions. Notably, when Vinicius had a goal ruled out for a contentious offside, despite the ball deflecting off of a Moroccan player. I don't like speaking about referees, but it's true that today was a little bit complicated. He whistled for a lot of fouls against us when we wanted to press, so it wasn't easy. The Brazilian did recognise the efforts of the Moroccan side, however. Nevertheless, I'm not looking for excuses. They're a good side and had a fantastic World Cup. Playing here, we knew it would be difficult. We tried to win the game, but that wasn't possible. And speaking of the Selecciao, they're still looking for a permanent boss. But Carlo Ancelotti has emerged as the front runner to take the reins at the end of the season and it appears his appointment would go down well with the squad. Keeper Edison has already interrogated his teammates on the prospect of his arrival. I spoke about it with Casemiro, Vinicius and Eder Militao. It's very possible that Carlo Ancelotti will become the new manager of Brazil. President of the Brazilian FA, Ednaldo Rodrigues, was also quizzed on the possibility. I really admire him for his honesty in the way he works and how constant his work is. He needs no introductions. He is a really top coach who has several achievements and we hope he can have even more. As for England, they followed up their 2-1 win over Italy with another comprehensive victory over Ukraine. The three Lions prevailed 2-0, and star boy Bakayo Saka produced yet another scintillating display, assisting Harry Kane for the opening goal before scoring an absolute stunner himself. Gareth Southgate's men now sit top of Group C with six points out of six. Why was Julian Nagelsmann sacked as Bayern Munich manager? That's been the question on everyone's lips this weekend. The German tactician was officially relieved of his duties on Friday evening, but the decision came after a day of speculation, and former Chelsea boss Thomas Tuchel was immediately named as his successor. That infamous German efficiency coming to the fore once again. During his unveiling, Bayern CEO Oliver Kahn touched on the reasons for his departure. The former German shot stopper refuted claims that the club had acted prematurely. Bayern Munich had just suffered a damaging 2-1 defeat to Bayern Leverkusen just days prior, but many feel this was the last straw after a raft of internal issues. It is our duty and our job to ensure sporting success. It has nothing to do with panic at all. We looked at everything closely, and the decision was well thought out. Sporting director Hassan Salihamidzic then pointed in the direction that the team was headed. When the performance curve is pointing downwards, you have to react. Despite having qualified for the quarter-finals of the Champions League, Bayern Munich have uncharacteristically struggled to dominate the Bundesliga this season. The Bavarians currently sit in second place behind rivals Borussia Dortmund. Clearly, the club expected more given the means at their disposal. We have one of the best squads in Europe, but the continuity was not getting any better. We can't be satisfied with performance and results this year. 
If you look at everything, we've only won 5 out of 10 games in the Bundesliga. That's not our ambition. Incidentally, Thomas Tuchel's first game in charge for Bayern will come against his former side and closest title rivals Dortmund. The pair will lock horns in Die Klassiker, Germany's showpiece fixture, at the Allianz Arena on the 1st of April. Upon his unveiling, Thomas Tuchel expressed empathy for his compatriots. Nie schön, weil wir wissen natürlich alle, dass die Trainerstelle auch immer nur frei wird, wenn, wenn, sie, wenn sie frei gemacht wurde. Das, hat so die, das ist einfach die, die, die Logik des Geschäfts. But it appears the prodigious coach is set to make an immediate return to management. Tottenham have been quick to express an interest. And that comes just hours after Antonio Conte's departure from the club. It's been in the pipeline for days now, but the Italian tactician has finally left the North London club. Spurs announced on Sunday that the former Juventus manager, who arrived at the club in November 2021, has left by mutual consent. The 53-year-old severed ties with the dressing room following his extraordinary outburst after Spurs' 3-3 draw with Southampton just before the international break. It was the final straw for Conte, who saw his side surrender a healthy lead once again. We are 11 players that go into the pitch. I see selfish players. I see players that don't want to help each other and don't put their heart. I'm not used to seeing this type of situation. I don't see a team. Because they are used to it here. They are used to it. They don't play for something important. They don't want to play under pressure. They don't want to play under stress. It is easy in this way. Tottenham's story is this. 20 years, there is the owner and they never won something. But why? The fault is only for the club or for every manager that stay here. Christian Stellini will take temporary charge alongside Ryan Mason. The side have 10 games left to try and secure Champions League qualification for next season. A raft of names have already been linked with this vacant position now, including former manager Maurizio Pochettino. If Daniel Levy opts against an emotional reunion with the Argentine, then Luis Enrique, Marco Silva, Oliver Glasner, Steve Cooper and Marco De Zerbi have also all been touted as potential successors. But let's move on now. French goalkeeper Mike Mignot has provided a rather spiky response to IFAB's new rules regarding penalties. The sporting body which implement the rules and regulations regarding the sport have announced that changes are going to come into effect on the 1st of July. They're seeking to prevent goalkeepers from unfairly distracting spot kick takers by delaying their efforts or by touching the posts and the bar. The proposals prompted the AC Milan shot stopper to react on Twitter. New rules for penalties in 2026. Keepers have to stand with their back to the takers. If they save it, it's an indirect free kick. So what do you guys think of the new changes? Okay, that's all the news from us for today. We'll be back again tomorrow for more. In the meantime, take care and as always, football forever.